you know, while we were there, I think when we moved back, when I moved back in 2005, it was really the sense of, you know, I've been in California, I've been in San Francisco, I've been to the Silicon Valley, you know, bubble, bust, and sort of slow resurgence. It really felt like, um, there was so much possibility in China, not just to make money, but there's so much, you know, China's a very dynamic place. It's all, it's still very dynamic, but there was so much change coming and it felt, in many ways, it was a very hopeful period. Um, and the Olympics were coming and I think we were all there during the Olympics period and, and it was sort of the sense of sort of this, this place is different, but it's heading in some, some good directions, not all good, but certainly some positive directions. And, that, um, you know, maybe we should have paid more attention to the Olympics opening ceremony. Um, but I think, you know, eight years on, there are some strands out of that opening ceremony that we're kind of seeing now. And so over the last, um, really last two years, I was there. Um, and it really, I think it, it, it corresponds with the, the rise of Xi Jinping. A lot of that sort of hopefulness um, from a sort of a, a more positive political change perspective has, has is, is, is shifted or has, has dissipated. And it's not just the foreigners up here on the, on the stage. I think I see it with a lot of my, my, my Chinese friends. I mean, it's always, I'm, I'm very wary about sort of saying what Chinese people say because I had my small circle of friends in Beijing and that doesn't necessarily apply to the whole country. And I'm certainly not gonna pretend it does. But I think that um, what we're seeing now is that it, it corresponds with economic problems. It corresponds with the political changes, the corruption crackdown, which is supported by a lot of people until it means that their business suffers because they no longer get the sort of the trickle down effect from, from all the graft. So I think um, one of the, you know, there are several reasons we left and I'll spare you the litany, you know, they include the air and the kids and the education, et cetera. But the, the bigger reason for me was that there, for me, it really feels like there's a shift going on where under Xi Jinping, it, it's another one of those cycles in Chinese history where they're trying to de, there's, there's gotta be a good, uh, you probably know the right word, but sort of de-foreign, sort of push back on the foreign influences. And as a foreigner in Beijing, that increasingly became uncomfortable. And you saw, you know, we, we all saw, we were there in 2012, we saw what happened with the protests, uh, uh, the anti-Japanese protests over the nationalization of the islands in September of 2012. And as an American there, you know, I, I have little kids, you start thinking, okay, this could, the, 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 the atmosphere is being set up so that this could actually happen to Americans too pretty quickly if, if, if something went, went sideways. And so um, it just was a less of an interesting place. Maybe I'm older, but um, there's still dynamic. I miss the food, I miss my friends, I miss the energy. I mean, DC is obviously an interesting town, but it doesn't quite have the level of the sense of dynamism. And, um, but ultimately, you know, it, it, and, and for me, it, it really came down to, and, and Evan talks about in his book, this sort of ambition and possibilities where, feels like there are just fewer possibilities right now between the political, the re, sort of very re, sort of political regression as well as the economic problems. It's just, it's a very difficult time. To your question, and I'm almost done, to your question about sort of is the system, um, you know, is it gonna collapse? I mean, it could collapse since 2001, right? Every, it was, the collapse was coming. Um, I think that uh, actually um, what you're seeing is you were just heading towards a much harder authoritarianism where you look at what Xi Jinping done is, has done since he came to power and he clearly had support of many people at the top levels of the party, at least at the beginning, is he took control of security services. He taking, looks like he's taking control of the PLA. He, he has control over the sources of hard power in China. And so even though there are these social issues, even though there's economic issues, he controls, I think, a very much uh, empowered a security service. Um, a very, and so it's a very, again, there's a lot of the ingredients for a very difficult few years in China. Yeah, 